Welcome to the part two of uh, this Fit2D tutorial. In part one, we explained how to download Fit2D and how to input and calibrate a calibrant and how to input and integrate a data uh, diffraction pattern and how to output the results. In this section, we will move on to explain how can we uh, perform batch processing. That is, how can we automate the same procedure but uh, for many diffraction patterns. First, we will need to, of course, open Fit2D and then, as usual, we press accept. We select the dimensions. In my case, I'm using the MAR detector. So it's 3056 by 3056. This can be different in dif uh, if you're using a different detector. And then click OK. Um, and then we will need to um, calibrate, um, um, to do a calibration. Um, in our case, it's a lab six caliber. So as before, I'm just going to repeat what we said in part one. Maybe this is a refresher um, if you're watching. Um, so again, calibrant. Uh, sorry, I will have to put the. We have to input the calibrant first. Um, it's in my desktop. Test. And that's lab six. Click OK. Here's our lab six. And then we will need to calibrate this lanthium hexaboride. Input the detected uh, uh, sample to detect the distance. Input your wavelength, which depends on the energy, x ray energy, uh, which is to be provided by um, um, your um, synchrotron facility or synchrotron beam line. Then the dimension is. Um, so this is the pixel size, dimensions of pixel. In our case, it's 80. It might be different for the detector you're using. And again, we click no, because we don't want to refine the wavelength. Um, then we select input coordinates on the inner uh, sample ring. So we'll put about, yeah, more than three. And then we click the yellow button it's calibrated now uh, we need to ensure that the calibration is done correctly so we cake it we start azimuth we click here to, to end azimuth at 360 and then the inner limit should be somewhere here the outer limit then click to define the outer limit at the end of the diffraction pattern and then we integrate click, click integrate don't change anything in this menu click OK and then here we need to change the radial into 360. So both the azimuthal and the radial should be 360. We don't need to change anything else. We click OK. Uh, we're looking for straight lines, as mentioned in the previous video. So our calibration is definitely successful. Now uh, it's time to input our data. We input test 1. So that's one of our diffraction patterns. Uh, and then we don't need to uh, click um, anything and uh, change anything here, just click OK. This is our diffraction pattern. We click on cake. Yes, we will start the, we will have the same start azimuthal and end azimuthal, but we will change the inner ring. We're looking, in our case, let's choose the 002 reflection as an example. We click inner radius and then uh, making sure that we see this magnification window here. We make sure that we are as close as possible to the ring, somewhere right, right here. So this is the inner radius, and then we click on the outer radius, and then we go in there and the out, we um, select uh, an area just outside the diffraction pattern, somewhere here. So now we've selected um, our cake, um, um, our caked uh, reflection. Now we can go ahead and integrate it. Uh, click OK. Then uh, make sure these are both 360 just to make sure that we are not missing any 
areas of our uh, reflection. So 360, 360, the azimuthal bins and the radial bins should all both be 360. Click OK. Um, as you can see here, we're not right in the middle. It's OK, but um, um, ideally, we will have this reflection right in the middle of our screen. So what we can do here, we need to change, in this case, we need to change the inner rad uh, radius. Uh, we make it a little bit, we make it higher, so we can reduce the, the window. So we'll exchange, click exchange to go back to the diffraction pattern, integrate again, click OK. And then here you will see the inner radial limits. So we increase this. It's four. It's five four seven. We'll just increase it to five fifty, and this should uh, fix the issue. Click OK. Well, we still have a little of space. Um, click Exchange again. Integrate. OK. And then here we change it to five five five. And let's see what we'll have now. Now this is perfect. We have our reflection right in the middle. Um, now we are happy with our uh, reflection cake. Um, then we click exchange. Make sure that we are on exchange before we uh, carry on uh, to the next step. The next step is involves creating a macro. So it's a text uh, file where we have to create it first uh, using a program called Mofit. Um, this program, um, it um, um, you can input all the data that you have from the integration and from the calibration into that program, and it will uh, create a a text file for as many diffraction patterns as you've set it to be. So let's say you have 30 diffraction pattern, 1,000 diffraction pattern. It will uh, repeat the same process for every diffraction pattern um, as many times as you've set it to be. Um, so first of all, we'll move this little bit to the to the uh, left, um, and I will include the name uh, or where you can download this uh, program. It's called Mofit. So here is Mofit. I will include the um, the, the website um, in the description, so you can access it whenever you you need to. Um, um, when you start Mofit, this uh, is the first screen. So you have the main menu there, and you'll see you'll have different tabs. You can click for different analysis. In our case, we'll go to the macros tab. The first thing we need to do in this program is select the browser so where is where is our where's um, where are the diffraction patterns are stored so we browse and then in my case it's right in the desktop and test and this is our folder we click open now our folder is right there now here so this is my folder right there you can see here here are my example diffraction patterns from one zero 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 one zero 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 two three four five in the prefix we will need to put the test underscore without the numbers so that's where prefix go um, the extension in our case is EDF so that's where it goes and then the first file to the last file so this is depends on how many files you want to analyze so in our case there's five files so we click from one to five Another important thing to check before we perform or before we go to the next step is here. So in the main menu, just make sure that the digits number matches the number the number of digits you have uh, following the underscore or following the text. In our case, we have four digits, as you can see, 0, 0, 0, 1, four digits. So we put four in the digits number. If this is five, then you change that to five accordingly. Let's now um, fill this information in, in Morphit. So it's test underscore. The extension was EDF. The number of digits is four. We don't need to change that. And the first file is one. The last file is five. Next, we will need to fill 
the experimental geometry section. This is this, all this information can be acquired from Fit2D. So when we click integrate, we can get this information. So once you've set your cake and you're happy with your reflection being within the window, just like we've checked, now it's time to um, fill this information into this program, MoFit. So when we click integrate, the first menu is the experimental geometry. This was set when we set when we calibrated our calibrant. Um, you will notice that all the these different sections are similar here: horizontal pixels, vertical pixels, sample to detector distance, wavelength. So you fill in all this information. 80, 80, 200, 0 0.82, uh, beam center. So you fill all this information. You have It has to be filled accurately um, throughout. So for example, 1022.997, and as, as such. Then when we click OK, we'll move to the next menu. So here is the type of azimuth or transform um, or two theta transformation. So as you can see here, it's this transformation type similar as the previous menu. You have all these options and parameters um, copied into this program. So start azimuth zero and azimuth 360. So again, you um, copy everything you see here, 5, 6, 7, so this is the outer uh, radius, so we put the inner radius 5, 5, 5, outer radius 5, 6, 7, point nine three nine five seven three nine five seven three and so on. You copy it exactly as you see it in here. So, um, uh, for example, the scan type is 2 theta, uh, default approx uh, degree of azimuthal bins, no, um, number of azimuth 360, and the radial azimuth, though, this has to be changed to 1 because we don't want, we would like to have a 1D plot, uh, as we mentioned in the previous um, in our previous um, 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 video, in part one, we mentioned that if you would like to analyze a single reflection, like the one we caked in this example, the number of azimuth should be 360, and the number of radial bills should be one. If, for example, we would like to uh, analyze whole diffraction pattern, so we cake the whole diffraction pattern, not only a single reflection, then this will be inverted. The azimuth will be 1 and the number of radial bin will be 360. Now in this case, as I mentioned, we're analyzing a single reflection, therefore 360, 1. And then intensity uh, conservation, no. Apply polarization correction, yes. As you can see, this is all exactly the same. Now, once we are happy, so this is how, this is our uh, single reflection curve. So we exchange. Make sure that this is always in exchange when you're starting the macro. Now, let's generate the macro. We are ready to generate our macro. So we click on generate. Now you will get a success uh, window saying the operation is completed. And the file is saved in the same folder where your data are. So here it is test dot mac so this is our macro and if we open it just to give you an idea it should look like this a text file a long text file now let's go back to fit 2d as i said before make sure that if it's on the analysis page make sure you exchange click exchange so you are on the diffraction image page this is a very important step because because the macro will start at this page and will integrate this page 
uh, we click exit to go back to the previous menu again we click exit to go back to the main menu and then we click on macros or log file we click on that and then we run the macro we click run now it will ask us where is our macro file and it will remember the last folder you were in and that's the folder where our macro is saved right here is test.mac um, of course if you are in a different folder you need to navigate to that folder in my case is test and here is our files and you click once you click that it will start um, giving you um, or automatically generating the macro files the data files so the data files are saved again in the same folder where your um, diffraction patterns are saved so as you can see now here we have for each uh, diffraction pattern we have a data file and the diffraction pattern image so this is our data file we have data file for now one data file two data file three so it did it did the whole process automatically this is very helpful if you have thousands of diffraction patterns and you would like to perform this uh, process automatically rather than uh, caking and saving and integrating um, over and over again this will uh, ensure that these all these processes are performed automatically again I will leave a link in the description where you can find where where you can find how to download um, uh, this program Morphit, which will generate the macro files, um, and hopefully, I will um, um, uh, in the next uh, part, I will explain how we can create composite maps. Thank you very much for listening, and see you in the next part.